In this video, we're going to take a more in-depth look at energy consumption and emissions results that are generated in Greet.net. I covered some basics about results in previous videos, like where to find the results for a pathway, and how results for a single process can be isolated by copying and pasting into Microsoft Excel. You can click on the links below to jump to those videos if you'd like a refresher on some of the fundamentals. Here I'm going to get more detailed about how results are generated in the model and how to break down the overall results presented in the WTP pane into individual components. First we'll see how to divide total pathway results into results for each process in the pathway. Next I'll separate out total process results to see the contributions of each input. And finally I'll separate out results for an input to show the direct emissions coming from each technology within that input. A quick note before we start, the demonstrations in this video were done using GREET 2014 database version 11425. All values from the model are default values for that model version unless otherwise stated. If you're using a different version or using your own values for inputs, you'll probably see results that are different than those presented here. Now let's begin. To start, I'll bring up the pathway called Gasoline Blend Stock from Crude Oil for use in U.S. refineries. There are four processes in this pathway, a pathway mix called Crude Oil for use in U.S. refineries, a stationary process called CG Refining with predefined crude oil mixes, then two transportation processes called U.S. Conventional Gasoline to Bulk Terminal, and U.S. conventional gasoline to refueling station. The functional unit for this pathway is in terms of 1 million BTUs of gasoline blend stock, and the results displayed are both direct and upstream. In other words, the emissions and energy consumed in this pathway, as well as the emissions and energy consumed to produce all inputs in the pathway. Now if you remember from previous videos, when I click on an individual process, the emissions and energy consumption refresh and display results that are not for the whole pathway, but instead include upstream and direct results for all inputs up to and including that process that I clicked on. Notice that if I click on the pathway mix for crude oil, not only do the results refresh, but the functional unit also changes to reflect the output of crude oil instead of gasoline. You might also remember that results can be copied and pasted into an Excel spreadsheet for more analysis, and I've already done this for each process in this pathway, and I'll pull that spreadsheet up now. The first set of results here is for the complete pathway. The next set represents all inputs up to and including the main output, and this should be the same as the first set of results. The rest of the sets of results are for the other processes, working back from the main output, to refueling station, to bulk terminal, CG refining, and crude oil. I reorganized these results in a table on a separate worksheet, pulling out the more relevant emissions and resource groups, I also edited the results for each process so that they include only inputs for that process, but results for other processes are excluded. From now on, we'll just concentrate on the emissions results. We can see the isolated results for crude oil, CG refining, two bulk terminal, and two refueling station in the first four columns in this table. All emissions values for the main output are zero because the output doesn't use any energy. The last column, shaded gray, shows the summed values of the individual processes, and these values should equal the total results for the complete pathway. I copied and reorganized those results as well, and if you look down the list, you'll see that the values are equal. To get a sense of the influence each process has on the total pathway emissions, I made a stacked column chart showing the greenhouse gas emissions from each process. Crude oil accounts for a little less than half of the total GHG emissions, CG refining accounts for slightly more than half, and the transportation processes only account for around 3%. 
Now let's dig in to see how each input in a process contributes to total emissions for the process. And we'll do that by looking at CG refining. There are 11 inputs here. I'll right click and select edit this process to look more closely at the inputs. The first two inputs are pet coke and liquefied still gas, and they're set as internal products. Internal products are inputs that are produced within the process. In this case, pet coke and still gas are byproducts of the crude oil refining process. They're used for their energy, but they only contribute direct energy and emissions to process totals. The upstream impacts are already accounted for in the crude oil input. The next input is water, which adds no emissions to the process total. The rest of the inputs are fairly common. We can see that the crude oil input is the output of a previous process, so that's our main input. I'll just point out the two gasoline blend stock inputs, which are distinguished by having two different pathway sources. Returning to the full pathway, you can see that the results refresh when I click on an input. The new results are for that single input. I copied over the results for each input into my spreadsheet, then reorganized them in a new worksheet as before. Here are all the inputs and their emissions in the table. The shaded column at the right shows the summed emissions totals, and I'll check to see that they match the total emissions for the CG refining process. And they do. Let's look at the chart of greenhouse gas emissions for each input. The crude oil from which the gasoline is being made accounts for around 40% of GHGs, the most of any of the inputs. Crude oil pet coke and still gas together account for over 75% of GHGs, with relatively small contributions from the other inputs making up the rest of the total. At this point we've looked at a breakdown of pathway results and a breakdown of process results. Now we'll look at a breakdown of results for a single input, and the input we'll look at is liquefied still gas. I can expand the input to see the technologies large gas turbine, utility industrial boiler, and small industrial boiler, but the only technology actually used is the utility industrial boiler. When I click on the liquefied still gas input, the displayed results include all of the direct and upstream emissions, and I copied these results to my spreadsheet for my inputs analysis. The sum of the technology results, however, will not include the upstream impacts since the technology emissions are from direct combustion of liquefied still gas. A quick note about the functional unit here. Notice that the functional unit feature is missing since I clicked on the liquefied still gas input. This is because the displayed results are only for the input amount for still gas, not for some output. So the emissions results we see are in terms of grams per the 92,000 BTUs consumed by liquefied still gas. Looking at the spreadsheet, column B here shows the results that we just saw in Greet.net. The first group of rows is for both direct and upstream emissions, but also pasted here are just the direct emissions, called on-site emissions. If this input wasn't an internal product, the well-to-use emissions and on-site emissions would be different, but since this still gas input contributes no upstream impacts, they happen to be the same, which is something to keep in mind if you're analyzing input technology results on your own. In the next few columns, you can see that the pasted results for the individual technologies are for on-site emissions only. Looking now at the organized emissions for the inputs, once again, the sum of the component emissions equals the total emissions, in this case, the total for an input. This is a pretty simple example, since there's only one technology being used for the input. The chart here shows the utility industrial boiler accounting for all GHG emissions. To build on this example, I added a similar process and pathway, but changed the liquefied still gas input so that all three technologies had some share percentage. I'll expand the refining process. 
then expand the still gas input. And now the large gas turbine has a 25% share, the utility industrial boiler has a 60% share, and the small industrial boiler has a 15% share. I copied and organized results as before, and the summed emissions equal the total input emissions as they should. As we would expect, the utility industrial boiler is responsible for about 60% of the greenhouse gas emissions, the small industrial boiler accounts for about 15%, and the large gas turbine for about 25%, the same as their technology shares. We've reached the end of this lesson on analyzing results. Understanding how results are generated in GREET is a pretty important skill. We plan to post more videos touching on this topic in the future to make sure GREET users can easily navigate through their model results. As always, thanks for watching.